A viral video show the moment 71-year-old British man Michael Hodge was dragged through the lion's den at his own facility in Thabazimbi, South Africa on April 28, 2018. Hodge had been showing visitors around the Marikali Animal Sanctuary where he was seen entering the cage with another man believed to be a keeper with a small bucket in hand. He coaxed the lion, named Shamba, toward the edge of the enclosure. Shamba responded to this encroachment by hurtling towards Hodge. The terrified man made a break for the door of the enclosure before the lion pounced, but unfortunately, Hodge didn't make it out in time. The massive cat's attack caught him fair and square, knocking him to the ground. In the footage, onlookers could be heard screaming in fear as Hodge was being dragged away toward the bush by Shamba. Witnesses were heard shouting while Hodge was screaming for help. Shamba was seen pawing at the man's head, then flipping him to his other side, before eventually disappearing from view behind the bushes as onlookers sobbed in fear. Someone was heard yelling and making noises in a vain attempt to scare the big cat away. A shotgun rang out and the lion scurried away, leaving the safari park owner lion motionless on the ground. A tourist present for the event urged keepers to find a gun in case the lion couldn't be calmed down or tranquilized. Shortly thereafter, Shamba was put down. Hodge was subsequently taken to a hospital where he was treated for the cuts and broken jaw he'd suffered. Following the lion's death, people were furious with the park. A tirade of angry comments were posted on the park's Facebook page. A Facebook user posted that Hodge should be ashamed of himself and expressed distaste at smiling hospital photos released by the victim in the wake of the incident. Another user lamented the death, saying, the lion shouldn't have been killed because a wild animal was being exactly that, a wild animal. Obvious references to the infamous death of the great ape Harambe were also brought up. Number 20. Lauren Fagan On July the 1st of 2013, 18-year-old Lauren Fagan of Canada was mauled by a lion while volunteering at the Moholoholo Wildlife Rehabilitation Center in Hoodsplut, South Africa. Fagan had been asked to clean the feeding pen attached to the lion's enclosure, which was housing a five-year-old male lion named Duma. While Fagan was cleaning Duma's feeding cage alone, the lion began rubbing himself against the gate facing the cage. Moments later, the creature suddenly stuck its paw through the gate and caught one of Fagan's legs. It pulled her through the bars, trapping her knee before beginning his vicious attack. Within seconds, Duma's mate joined in the mauling, gnawing at Fagan's feet. As other volunteers heard Fagan screaming, they ran into the enclosure. Among them was 24-year-old Natalie Bennett, who attempted to fight off the lions with a broom. A couple minutes later, the lions released Fagan and Bennett tended to the victim's wounds. Fagan sustained puncture wounds in her calf and huge gorges in her thigh. Her left kneecap had been nearly torn off and was hanging by a piece of skin. She was subsequently rushed to a nearby hospital in the wake of the incident. Fagan said she didn't believe the lion was trying to kill her, but didn't know what had triggered the attack. She added that she'd been put at risk when she was asked to work alone within reach of a lion's pen. Furthermore, she insisted that she was following staff instructions at the time of the attack. But the founder of the center, Brian Jones, argued that it was Fagan who'd been negligent. Jones said the team didn't listen to repeated warnings not to touch the animals and ignored signs posted around the reserve, hugging several animals on her first day. After her first week, Fagan was seen trying to hug leopards and chase the antelope around the yard. Jones's thoughts at this point amounted to, goodness me, she's cuckoo. There were witnesses at the park who claimed to have seen Fagan too close to the enclosure. She was even warned by other staff to move back before the lion grabbed her. Jones claimed that it was almost impossible for anything to happen unless the rules were broken. Number 19. Banagata Biological Park Incident A pair of lions reportedly struck terror into the hearts of tourists in January of 2017. After climbing on top of a Toyota Innova 
and chomp in the rear window. The incident took place at the Banagata Biological Park between the city center of Bengaluru and Anakal, a town in India. The massive cats had been stalking the Toyota for some distance before catching up with it and launching their attack. As soon as the lions pounced, the visitors could be heard crying in fear. Once the vehicle moved on, however, the lion simply went away. Following the incident, the park's executive director, Santosh Kumar, stated that the driver was at fault. Kumar added that the driver had been removed from safari duty because the man should never have stopped the car. According to one of the park's vets, the lion's behavior could have been changing due to the increased number of safari vehicles, which were bringing visitors who could potentially irritate the animals. Number 18. Honeymoon at a Uganda Safari On October 17th of 2023, a newlywed couple was shot dead during their honeymoon at a safari park in Uganda. The victims were 50-year-old British man David Barlow and his South African wife, 51-year-old Emeritia Gaia, along with their tour guide Eric Aliai, aged 40. The trio had been traveling along Katunguru Katwe Kabatoro Road in a safari vehicle to see the wildlife at Queen Elizabeth National Park when they were attacked. Law enforcement believed that the heinous crime was carried out by the Allied Democratic Forces, a local group allegedly linked to ISIS. The group is believed to have laid in wait before robbing the victims. Responding officers found the vehicle set ablaze, the bodies of the victims laying on the dirt road nearby. In early November of 2023, the extremist group's alleged commander, Abdul Rashid Kyoto, was arrested during an army operation on Lake Edward. The 31-year-old was accused of killing Barlow, Gaia, and Ali Ai. He was charged with extremism and three counts of murder. As of the latest updates, Kyoto is awaiting his court date while authorities continue to seek out others involved with the incident. Number 17. Olga Solomina The Taigan Safari Park in Crimea, Ukraine, came to the attention of global media in September of 2018 after a lion crawled into a safari vehicle and started licking and climbing over several tourists. The owner of the park, 50-year-old Oleg Zubkov, had been driving the park's open-air buggy when the incident occurred. The tourists took selfies and recorded video of a two-year-old lion named Philia on their phones. Philia was even rubbing his face on tourists and even licking some of them as Zubkov, who was also a lion tamer, kept a close watch and narrated for the cameras. The safari park was known for offering up close and personal views of lions and other animals, which landed the jungle park in some trouble only eight weeks earlier. 46-year-old tourist Olga Solomina was attacked by a lion named Vitya around that time. Solomina had joined in a park activity called Walk with the Lions, which involved direct contact with the large cats. She wanted a picture with the lion, so she knelt down next to Vitya and ruffled its mane. The animal suddenly grabbed her arm and dragged her away. Zubkov intervened and eventually calmed Vitya, saving the woman. He then took the woman to the park's medical facility. Doctors later diagnosed Solomina with a serious infection caused by the bite. Zubkov claimed it was Solomina's fault, saying she'd turned up intoxicated. He added that the lion only bit her because she had pulled its mane. Although Walk with the Lions initially continued, the activity was ended after lengthy talks with Crimean authorities shutting down in April of 2019. Following an investigation into the Morlin incident, Zubkov was accused of providing services that didn't meet security requirements. He was later found guilty and fined more than $4,000. He was also ordered to pay the victim over $3,000 as compensation for non-pecuniary damage. In July of 2022, Zubkov was back in court. This time, he ended up being convicted of negligence after one of his tigers bit off the finger of a one-year-old boy during the previous year. He was given a prison sentence of two years and three months. The man served three months in prison before being released on parole in October of 2022. Number 16. Tanya Milani 
In July of 2018, Englishwoman Tanya Milani was left terrified when a bear at a drive through safari park launched itself at her family's vehicle. The 53-year-old, her two daughters, and her grandson had been driving their Ford Fiesta around the Woburn Safari Park. After rounding a corner, they spotted a bear, which immediately jumped straight onto their car. As per the instructions around the park, the family beeped the horn three times to signal a call for help to the rangers. The animal was snarling as it tried to bite its way onto the car, tearing at the wing mirror and windshield. With no help on its way whatsoever, the family drove steadily away with the ferocious bear still on the hood. Eventually, the creature moved on. Milani immediately confronted a member of staff and was directed to the duty manager, who said nothing like this had ever happened before. He added that it was probably because of the heat. In the end, the manager offered the family a $530 VIP package as an apology. Milani said that the package was sweet, but she wasn't completely satisfied. The park had no answer for the missing rangers, whose lack of a swift response during the incident endangered the Milani family and could potentially endanger others in the future. Number 15. Sarah McClay The South Lake Safari Zoo located in Dalton in Furness, England, was fined for charges in connection to the death of a zookeeper after a tiger went loose on May 24, 2013. An inquest jury's narrative verdict stated that the Sumatran tiger, Padang, had gotten through unlocked sliding gates within its enclosure. Padang then went through a door that had been left open. This led the animal to a corridor where keeper Sarah McClay was to be found. The animal charged at the 24-year-old, leaving her with deep puncture wounds on her neck and body. The woman was airlifted to a hospital, where she was formally pronounced dead. Zoo management refused the family's request to put the tiger down. They were later accused of health and safety breaches. They accepted accusations that the risks stemming from a defective bolt on the door of the tiger's enclosure hadn't been sufficiently addressed. After pleading guilty to breaching the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 and failing to ensure people's safety in June of 2016, the management was fined more than $400,000. The zoo must also pay at least $200,000 in prosecution costs over the next 10 years. The owner, David Gill, also faced individual charges but was eventually acquitted. Number 14. Cabello Machau South African authorities announced the opening of an inquest docket into a tragedy during which Safari Park Ranger Cabello Machau was trampled and tussed to death by an adult male elephant on May the 1st of 2023. The 36-year-old had worked at the Inverdorn Private Nature Reserve, located just outside the town of Ceres. The safari reserve was home to African bush elephants, the largest land animal in the world. They can stand up to 13 feet tall and weigh as much as 12,500 pounds. The day in question was a public holiday, and Machau had volunteered to be on duty so others could take the day off. While the elephant handler was on park border patrol, he saw a fully grown tusker use its trunk to release a gate catch and escape. According to a park employee, the elephant at issue was normally very friendly and Michelle knew it well, so he went over to try and get it back through the open gate. Michelle approached the elephant and as he was attempting to lure it back into the camp, it got spooked and charged at him. Michelle was subsequently knocked to the ground by the elephant's trunk before he was stamped on repeatedly. The animal also drove its tusks through him several times, leaving him unrecognizable. The victim was declared dead at the scene. Park employees claimed that they didn't know what went wrong. In the aftermath of the tragedy, the reserve's management provided support to its staff and Michelle's family, though it wasn't made clear if the killer elephant would be euthanized. Number 13. Hungry Lions at Serengeti National Park Tour guide Emmanuel Bio witnessed an incident in November of 2015 during which a pride of hungry lions attacked a jeep full of tourists at Tanzania's Serengeti National Park. Bio had witnessed the lions destroying the vehicle's tires and attempting to shatter windows to reach the terrified victims. Bio said the creatures hadn't had a kill for a while 
and seemed hungry. He added that the lions were trying to get inside the vehicle for about an hour. The lions also attempted to smash the windows. Fortunately, the trucks are equipped with reinforced glass, which kept this story from taking a tragic turn. I think everyone should come on a safari with me to have these experiences, Bio said of the incident, calling it exhilarating. Number 12. Catalina Torres Ibarra On August 6, 2021, Catalina Torres Ibarra was fatally wounded by a tiger after colleagues failed to warn her that the cage door was open, violating company protocol. The incident unfolded at the Parque Safari Chile in Rancagua, Chile. The 21-year-old had been sent to perform cleaning duties at the zoo's Big Cat Enclosure. One of her colleagues claimed that Ibarra hadn't been informed that the tiger's cage door was still open. While she was cleaning, the tiger attacked her, leaving her with fatal neck wounds. Amid an internal investigation into Ibarra's death, colleagues were reportedly shifting blame to avoid personal liability. The park's finance manager claimed that a group of workers had deliberately unlocked the tiger's cage, which goes against company protocol. The workers in question denied the allegations, saying that the cage was already open. Ultimately, no single person ended up taking responsibility for the attack. Number 11. Catherine Chappell In mid-2015, American woman Catherine Chappell was killed by two lions during a South African safari tour. The 29-year-old, who worked as a visual effects artist on HBO's Game of Thrones and big-budget flicks including Captain America and Godzilla, had traveled to the country to volunteer as a wildlife conservationist. While reportedly taking a break from volunteering, she went to Lion and Safari Park in Johannesburg on June the 1st. Chapel was riding in an SUV along with several others, cruising around the conservation enclosure. Behind the SUV was another vehicle containing more tourists, including Ben Govender. The 38-year-old man saw Chapel's SUV stopping next to two lions. At that point, Chapel rolled down the window of the SUV to take a picture of the animals which were lying on the ground. Govinder said that at first the male and female lions didn't seem interested and that a lioness stood up on its rear paws, balancing on the vehicle. It suddenly lunged forward, putting his head through the window and biting Chapel in the neck. 66-year-old safari guide Pierre Potgita intervened by repeatedly punching the raging lioness in the face, causing it to retreat from the car with blood still dripping down its mouth and paw. Undeterred, the animal quickly returned and launched a devastating second attack. Two rangers responded to the scene, came running in, and the lions were spooked off and ran away. Chapel was left with her face torn apart and one side of her chest completely gone, bitten into by the animals. Pot Gita called for help and attempted to stop the bleeding by applying pressure, but Chapel died shortly before paramedics arrived. Pot Gita, for his part, was hospitalized after suffering a heart attack on the scene. Park staff commented in the wake of the incident. Their assertion was that the tragedy was entirely the tourist's fault and entirely preventable. The catalyst of the incident, the open window, was said to be absolutely forbidden. The incident was not the first time something like this had happened at this particular safari park. Around two months before Chapel's death, a man was attacked by a lion. Like Chapel, he also opened his car window, inviting danger and breaking park rules. Brendan Smith, originally from Australia, was brought to the Four Ways Life Hospital. He survived the incident, later admitting fault. In the aftermath, Smith posted graphic photos of what looked like teeth marks that had broken through his skin. In the post, he wrote, Should have been a lot worse, but chicks dig scars, so I'll be sweet. Despite repeated incidents, authorities are not charging the park or any staff with anything as of this writing. Number 10. Chantal Bayer In January of 2013, Johannesburg student Chantal Bayer was severely gored by a white rhino while posing for a photo during a safari tour. 24-year-old Bayer was visiting a South African nature reserve with her boyfriend and had gotten out of the vehicle to look at the animals. Their guide, Alex Richter, reportedly told the couple it was safe to stand closer to the rhinos. It's also been reported that Richter had given the beast food as a way of encouraging them to approach the tourists. A photo was taken of the couple, standing only a few feet away from two white rhinos, posing with their backs turned to them. Moments after it was taken, one of the massive beasts charged Bayer and gored her from behind. 
the rhino inflicted severe injuries with its horn, resulted in broken ribs and a collapsed lung. Bea was rushed to an intensive care unit where, fortunately, doctors managed to stabilize her. It's still unclear what disciplinary actions, if any, were taken against the tour guide. Number 9. Bupendra and Jagruthi Raval. In 2015, an Indian couple was trampled to death by a wild elephant during a tour of a remote forest in central Kerala. The victims, both in their early 50s, were part of an eight-member group from Gujarat that had traveled to the Gavi region. At some point during a guided trek through the forest, Bupendra Raval and his wife Jagruthi encountered three elephants. The tourists took their cameras out and started photographing the animals. It's believed that one of the giant beasts became enraged by the camera's flash. It charged the couple and their guide. Unfortunately, Bupendra and Jagruthi couldn't get out of the way in time. They were viciously mauled and trampled to death by the wild elephant. The guide, whose name wasn't released, also sustained injuries in the attack, but they weren't described as life-threatening. Number 8. Curtis Plum in 2015, a British safari guide in South Africa became the victim of a ferocious leopard attack. While given a tour in Kruger National Park, 38-year-old Curtis Plum had stopped the open-top vehicle so that tourists could look at the big cat. Plum peered out over the side of the vehicle, trying to find the beast, but failed to notice that the leopard was alongside him. The feline reached inside the vehicle and pounced on Plum's arm. It started to savagely bite and claw into the man's limb. Some of the tourists who were seated behind the guide, tried to help by striking the leopard with their cameras. The occupants of another vehicle tried hitting it with the car door, but the feline maintained its grip. Plum reversed the car and managed to free himself, but the beast attacked again. It jumped on the hood, trying to reach the tourists, but the guide hit the brakes and the feline fell. Once more, it charged the front of the vehicle. Seeing the relentlessness of the leopard and fearing the tourist's safety, the guide chose to run it over. The animal sustained severe injuries and was later put down. Plum was taken to a local hospital, and after undergoing surgery, his condition was pronounced as stable. Number 7. Patrick Forgode In August of 2015, a couple was attacked by a lion while sleeping in their tent during an African safari. 64-year-old Patrick Forgode and his wife Bridget were several nights into their safari at the Ruaha National Park in Tanzania. The woman awoke to find the lion sniffing at her back. It then clamped its powerful jaws on Patrick's arms and tried to drag him out of the tent. Others intervened and managed to scare off the massive feline. Patrick suffered extensive injuries to his arm, for which he had to undergo multiple surgeries. A large chunk of his triceps had been torn clean off, leaving behind a gaping bite mark. The couple also struggled with mental health problems as a result of their ordeal. In the incident's aftermath, the Four Goads sued the UK-based safari company for not doing enough to ensure they'd be safe from nighttime animal attacks. The company fought the claim for several years but eventually settled for a payout towards the couple. Number 6. Jiao and Jiao On July the 23rd of 2016, one woman was killed and her daughter was severely injured at Badaling Wildlife World in Beijing, China. The 6,000-acre reserve offered tours but also allowed visitors to drive themselves. One cardinal rule was that they never got out of the car. Believing they'd driven past the area where the tigers were kept, a young woman left her vehicle and walked over to the driver's side. The woman identified as Yao by her first name was suddenly attacked by a massive Siberian tiger. The beast quickly brought her down and started dragging her away. It was then that the driver and Yao's mother, Jo, rushed to help her. Local media reported that Jo was gruesomely mauled by the tiger while trying to save her daughter, but Darling's staff rapidly intervened and rescued the other family members, but Jo's injuries were fatal. Jiao survived, but has sustained severe lacerations to her neck. An investigation cleared the park of any wrongdoing, but the family subsequently sued the reserve for roughly $170,000, alleging that it was partially responsible. Number 5. Kristen Yaldor in 2018, a 37-year-old woman was attacked by a hippo while on a canoe safari on the Zambezi River in Zimbabwe. After one of the guides saw hippos on the right side of the river, the guests were instructed to paddle left, away from the dangerous beasts. Florida woman Kristen Yaldor was at the front of a two-person canoe while her husband Ryan was at the back. The couple had started to paddle away when a hippo emerged underneath the canoe and capsized it. Ryan was thrown towards land and 
quickly swam to shore. When he turned around, he saw that the beast had Kristin's right leg in its enormous mouth. The woman punched the hippo several times in the face, and it released her. Ryan and the head guide pulled her to the riverbank, where first aid was administered. The woman was airlifted to a local clinic and then transferred to Johannesburg, where she had surgeries to mend her broken femur and to remove the dead tissue surrounding her leg wound. Number 4. Swiss Tourist In 2019 at South Africa's Kruger National Park, a Swiss tourist was left battling for his life in the aftermath of a car accident involving a giraffe. The unnamed elderly man and his wife were driving inside a specialized Ford Ranger safari camper. On the same road coming from the other way was a minibus, transferring over a dozen tourists to the Letaba Rest Camp Gaming Lodge. The minibus then collided with a fully grown giraffe, but it's unclear if the vehicle was speeding or not. The animal stood roughly 18 feet tall and weighed around 1,650 pounds. The impact dismantled the front of the minibus and knocked the large animal into the path of the Swiss tourist safari camper. The giraffe was thus fatally struck a second time, landing on the camper's roof and crushing it. The elderly man sustained critical injuries. He was airlifted to a local clinic and then transferred to a hospital in Johannesburg, where he was placed on life support. The tourist's wife, as well as a few passengers from the minibus, also survived minor injuries while the giraffe was killed by the double impact. Number 3. Quinn Swales In 2015, safari tour guide Quinn Swales was hailed as a hero for defending his group against a lion attack. 40-year-old Swales was leading a walking safari at the Huange National Park in western Zimbabwe. Tourists were taking photos of a group of six lions as they were standing under a tree. Some of the cubs approached them. This, according to a local policewoman, is what caused the group to suddenly be targeted by a large male named Nshaha. The animal, distinguishable by its black mane, had been collared by Oxford University researchers for a study on lion behavior. Nshaha was known as dangerous and unpredictable by park staff. The muscular feline was a prolific hunter, known for even taking down young elephants. Nshaha approached the tourist, but Swales stepped in front of the group trying to use his extensive experience to prevent an attack. He shouted the animal's name and the feline initially ran away. However, Nshaha then doubled back, pounced on Swales and started clawing and biting him. The attack left him with deep lacerations to his chest and neck, but none of the tourists in his group were harmed due to his heroic intervention. The safari guide was airlifted to a hospital where he later passed away from his wounds. Number 2. Elephant Kills Tourist in 2018, an unnamed German tourist was trampled to death by an elephant at the Mana Pools National Park in northern Zimbabwe. The 49-year-old woman was part of a group of visitors who'd seen a herd upon entering the park. When it comes to the number of elephants across this territory, Zimbabwe is the second most populous country in Africa. The beasts are known to sometimes come into conflict with the local human farmers, meaning they're more likely to exhibit defensive behavior. One source reports that the German tourist had left the vehicle and didn't maintain a safe distance while photographing the animals. One of the beasts broke from the herd and attacked her. The woman was brutally trampled by the elephant and succumbed to her injuries later that day. Immediately after number one, we will be adding our video about black bear encounters that went sideways. Stay tuned if you haven't seen that one yet. Number one, Carol Kirken. In 2017, Michigan woman Carol Kirken was killed by a hippo during a family vacation to Tanzania. Kirken, a philanthropist and beloved member of her community in Rochester Hills, was on an annual safari trip. Shortly before the attack, the 75-year-old had posted photos to her social media of the various animals she'd encountered in the African wilderness. On August the 5th, her last Facebook upload read that she'd seen a massive migration. That same day, Kirken was charged by a hippopotamus. Her family didn't disclose any further details surrounding the attack, but did mention that the woman passed away quickly in her son's arms. Number 10. By Pili Uvasi and Tirupathi Rao. In June of 2018, a black bear mauled to death a couple in southern India before aggressively defending itself from villagers trying to stop its rampage. 50-year-old by Pili Uvasi was ambushed by the bear in a cashew orchard from Yaramukam village in Andhra Pradesh. Her husband, Tirupathi Rao, heard the attack and intervened. 
The couple both sustained critical injuries and were later pronounced dead. Several men from the village were hurt as they tried to rescue them by attacking the bear with clubs and rocks. One man was pinned to the ground after the bear had clamped its jaws on his arm. Others were bitten and clawed, but they ultimately managed to beat the bear to death. In the incident's aftermath, seven people had to be taken to the hospital with severe injuries, but Urvasi and Raul were the only fatalities reported. A forest ranger told a media outlet that compensation would be paid to the victim's family. One local claimed that the authorities hadn't taken any measures to prevent black bear attacks, even though they'd become frequent in the area. Number 9. Black Bear Selfie In 2020, three female hikers had a dangerously close encounter with a black bear on a trail in Mexico's Chipinque Ecological Park. They remained calm as the animal approached them, as it seemed to only be curious and didn't behave aggressively. The bear then got up on its hind legs and started sniffing one of the women's hair. She kept her composure and even seized the opportunity to snap a selfie with the animal. As if on cue, the bear stood upright just long enough for the woman to take the picture. It then dropped down and gently swatted at her legs before walking away. The interaction was captured on camera by another park visitor and the video subsequently became viral. Former basketball player Rex Chapman was among the many social media users that reacted to it. He expressed bewilderment at the woman's behavior under pressure, writing, Oh my goodness, she's a rock. Black bears are ferocious animals and, understandably so, other users remarked how lucky the women had been that the black bear hadn't become aggressive. Number 8. Erin McKenzie In July of 2020, Canadian woman Erin McKenzie was running with her dogs at Ryden Mountain National Park. After going up a steep hill, the 27-year-old encountered a large black bear. It was surprised by the woman and almost instantly struck her in the face with its paw. The blow almost knocked Mackenzie out. It also swung at her back, leaving large claw marks on her left shoulder. The bear got up on its hind legs but then retreated without inflicting further damage. Mackenzie, who was about three miles from her car, was left with a deep gash on her face that ran from her eye to her nostril. The cut was less than a third of an inch from her eye. She walked 40 minutes back to her car, where she was met by her boyfriend and taken to a hospital. Doctors decided not to stitch up the wound on her face for fear of infection, in spite of what was likely due to become a large scar. Mackenzie considered herself fortunate not to have lost her eye. Number 7. Unnamed Woman in Colorado In May of 2021, a woman was attacked and partially eaten by black bears in an area north of Durango, Colorado. The unnamed 39-year-old had been out walking her dogs. The woman's boyfriend became concerned after they'd returned home without her at around 8.30 p.m., about an hour later. He called the emergency services after finding her mauled body off a highway. A dog team from the U.S. Department of Agriculture located a sow with two younger bears in the area. The animals were euthanized as they were deemed dangerous enough to cause additional attacks. A necropsy found traces of human remains in the stomachs of two bears. It's unclear what had prompted them to attack the woman. According to a preliminary examination, the bears seemed healthy and they had sufficient fat stores following their winter hibernation. One of the proposed theories was that the victim or her dogs had surprised the sow, prompting her to aggressively defend the yearlings. Number 6. Catherine Sweat Mueller In 2019, a Minnesota woman was killed by a black bear on a remote island in Canada. 62-year-old Catherine Sweat Mueller was vacationing with her parents, who were both in their 80s, at Red Pine Island on Rainy Lake. She'd heard her two dogs barking outside and left the cabin to investigate. When Sweat Mueller didn't return, her parents called the authorities. Within 30 minutes, officers arrived at the island by boat. It took search crews a while to locate the victim because there was a lot of underbrush and multiple different trails. They eventually found a black bear, aged between one and two, standing over Sweat Mueller's partially eaten body. A fully grown female and another yearling were spotted nearby, and officers reported they were making noises with their mouths and stomping. They shot dead the bear who they believed had been responsible for the fatal mauling. Other visitors were informed of the attack, which was considered a rare occurrence both in Ontario and Minnesota. Number 5. Stephanie Blaise 44-year-old Stephanie Blaze was fatally mauled by a black bear in 2020 
outside a cabin in McKee Lake, near Buffalo Narrows, Canada. The woman was talking to her father on a satellite phone when the horrific attack occurred. The last thing that the man heard was Blaze telling her nine-year-old son, Eli, to grab an antenna from inside the cabin. What followed was a series of gurgling noises, which Blaze's father described as very disturbing. He knew that bears had always wandered around the property, but they'd never been a problem. It's believed that from inside the cabin, Eli helplessly watched his mother get mauled by the beast. The woman's husband, Curtis, shot the bear dead and proceeded to give her CPR. However, by the time he'd intervened, she no longer had a pulse. Only a few minutes after the attack, Curtis called Blaze's father to tell him that she was dead. A GoFundMe was launched for Curtis and the children, which quickly rose to $40,000. Wildlife officers examined the bear's remains and found that its stomach was full of berries, meaning that the attack hadn't been driven by hunger. While the trigger in fact remained unclear, it's likely that it had charged Blaze from behind and killed her within only a few minutes. Number 4. Atsushi Aoki In 2016, a Japanese man used his karate skills to repel the attack of an Asian black bear, which is among the animal kingdom's most aggressive bear species. 63-year-old Atsushi Aoki was fishing at a creek in Gunma, northwest of Tokyo. The six-foot bear pounced on him in what Aoki claimed to have been an unprovoked attack. It knocked the fisherman down and proceeded to repeatedly bite and claw him, inflicting wounds on his head and limbs. Aoki knew he had no chance of outrunning it. He managed to get back to his feet and assumed a karate stance, with his right fist in front of the bear. Aoki later told a media outlet how at that moment he'd thought to himself, I kill him or he kills me. He delivered strikes to his attacker's eyes, prompting it to flee into the woods. Even though he was injured, Aoki managed to drive himself to the hospital. He even remembered to retrieve the fish he'd caught, which most likely had attracted the black bear in the first place. The Japanese media held the story as a triumph of man versus nature. However, wildlife authorities warned that defending against such predators with one's bare hands wasn't the best course of action. If confrontation is inevitable, Pepper spray remains among the best deterrents. A bear the size of the one that Aoki had faced is considerably stronger and much more durable than a human being. The situation could have been far worse had it decided to continue its attack. Number 3. Peter Frankzak In July of 2020, Peter Frankzak left his home in Red Lake, Ontario, to pick blueberries. When the 67-year-old didn't return as scheduled, the Ontario Provincial Police launched a search for him. Officers found the man's mangled remains with a black bear in the vicinity. It was shot and killed at the scene. A post-mortem examination concluded that Frank Zack's injuries were consistent with a bear attack, but wildlife authorities suspected that it hadn't been predatory in nature. Bears are known to eat vast amounts of berries, meaning that Frank Zack had most likely stumbled upon it while going for the same food source. Today's topic was requested by Sean Dillap, 8587. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Maheshi Devi In November of 2020, a couple from the state of Uttarakhand in northern India was attacked by a Himalayan black bear. They lived in Vajuk village and had been cutting grass for cattle fodder in a nearby forest when the predator ambushed them. The woman, identified as 47-year-old Maheshi Devi, took the brunt of the attack. She sustained devastating injuries and died on the spot. Her husband, whose name wasn't released, survived the attack by climbing up a tree. According to a divisional forest officer, Devi's family was to be compensated in the aftermath. Wildlife authorities claim that during the winter months, encounters between bears and humans tend to become more frequent as the bears come down from snowy higher reaches in search of food. Number 1. Patrick Cooper In the summer of 2017, an Alaskan teenager was mauled to death by a massive black bear while taking part in a popular trail running race. 16-year-old Patrick Cooper of Anchorage had reached a halfway point of the race when he texted his family to say that he was being chased by the animal. Around the same time, other runners were mobilized by the race's organizers to head back up the trail and look for survivors after a bear attack had been reported. The teenager's lifeless body was discovered about 500 yards from the trail. Once the alarm was raised with local wildlife authorities, a search operation was mounted, tasked with locating the animal. 
The 250-pound black beer suspected of having mauled Cooper to death was eventually found. Even though an officer had shot it in the face with a shotgun, the beer survived and managed to run off. It's unclear if the authorities were able to locate it or its remains again. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be mauled to death by several Sundarbans tigers or get burned alive by extremists in a safari? Let us know in the comments section below.